Well, while Mr. Kunlelade guy is trying to get ready, may I use this opportunity to welcome everybody to this first edition of the NAM Hangouts. NAM is the Nigerian Arts Music Project, and then this is the first time we'll be having these Hangouts. And the objectives basically is the promotion of Nigerian arts music promotion of Nigerian arts music both in Nigeria and in diaspora and I'm very sure that we are all arts um, practitioners enthusiasts I know that this session is for us we'll enjoy it this evening thank you and God bless hello everyone um, I welcome you to the first edition of the uh, Nigerian art music project hangouts and um, I must apologize for coming on late. Um, no excuse for that. Uh, and I promise that this will not be uh, repeated. Yes. Uh, thank you uh, for staying tuned. And um, you heard a lot from the initiator, there's um, Mr. Yuajai. Uh, today's topic, I'll, I won't waste most of your time. Uh, we'll just go straight to the business of today. Um, is negotiating social economic challenges, the role of African music practitioners, African music and art practitioners. So um, we have someone uh, who we've uh, invited to join us at this session today. And um, quickly, I would like to read out our profile. And that is um, in person of Dr. Grace Talabi. Dr. Grace Talabi, um, just a second, please. Also a doctorate uh, degree in music, musicology specialization from the Stellenbosch University, South Africa. She has since 2014, served in the lectureship position. Uh, she started at um, the arts faculty of the Bowen University and currently at the creative departments of the University of Lagos here in Nakoka. He is a catalyst fellow of the Center for African Studies at the University of Edinburgh, Scotland, United Kingdom. Uh, some of our research or our research interest includes um, interdisciplinary studies, music art practices in Africa, creative and artistic research, African arts music, scholarship with particular focus on music and social meaning alongside the ethical imperatives. I mean, you agree with me that there's no other person other than this woman uh, to discuss this topic today. Uh, please join me in welcoming to today's session, Dr. Grace Salabi. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible Good enough? Evening. Yes, you are. Okay. Okay. So um, thank you for having me here. So um, I'll be talking about negotiating social economic challenges, the role of African art um, practitioners. Of course, practitioners involved um, all of those who practice and um, art music. So um, why do I come with this topic? Of course, it's of particular interest to me. Um, because I've also done a research on this um, line, especially for my doctorate degree. So why do we do, do um, we African art music or musicians have to be involved in sociological um, perspective or study about music? So I have discovered over time um, that creative works along um, social, whether political or economic terrain remain unexplored in um, 
of course, in an intercultural um, composition. And this, of course, is not far-fetched because um, if you look at Nigerian uh, music, art music history, you cannot, um, you know, take away the colonial experience from it. And most of the composers um, from the 20th century, whom, of whom, um, of course, most of their works are still being performed, came to prominence at, a, you know, a very important um, period of our political history. And also looking at even our art music started in Nigeria, we cannot um, take away the church, I mean, like, missionary experience away from it. So we have a lot of corpus of composition along religious um, lines, cultural too, you know, but issues that deals with um, social economic um, problems or issues are left out. I mean, now talking about not just um, also um, bear, uh, bearing upon um, the textual, you know, content of our music. So um, I see that, of course, it is important that um, the kind of um, African modern arts um, composition is relevant to the Nigerian um, situation. And it also should extend beyond, you know, cultural, religious, you know, issues. But through composition, we can actually, you know, bring what is in the political realm or in the social, in, in everyday reality to, you know, uh, to, to bear in, in concert all. So I consider the concert all as a nascent space to, you know, discuss all of these issues. Well, to, to listen to all of these, all, all of these um, kinds of composition. And this practice, like I said, is not, when we talk about, I think it bears upon the aesthetics of African art. I mean, like the way we, we view music performance in um, Africa. So it's not just contemplative, but then something of an in-between that um, bears the functional and utilitarian, you know, um, 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 function. So the importance of making art music accessible to the mainstream African. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, so um, talking about the importance of making art music, you know, accessible to mainstream African audience. A kind of music that, you know, addresses social, um, societal issues through of course, the assimilated styles and techniques of various musical tradition that by adopting a creative form that appeals to, of course, the modern African sensibility. We can consider our um, performance as art, Nigerian art music performance can create a platform and space for conversations um, conversations that can transform the people. In this um, sense, I think of transformation as um, social transformation in the positive, well, um, view. So some, a conversation that can transform, you know, people's ideological positions or dispositions with regard to large scale um, and complex national problems. Of course, there are so many, problems Nigerian is grappling with at the moment. Insecurity is one of those, um, corruption and all of this. Why can't we have this in our music? This obviously does not totally, I mean, like push African arts music to uh, the popular music realm, like many may think. But I do think that if people can listen to such works, in a space like the concert hall, um, where you have, I mean, of course, a contemplative space for a contemplative kind of music. 
it can engender discussions, it can engender thoughts along the line of transformation, you know, of the society. So um, I think of a, a musical engagement that takes very seriously what can be called aesthetic of African art music to us in Nigeria and of course to African general, as well as the ethics that reaches back to what, you know, many African um, art music scholars have drawn upon. I mean, traditional music has to be relational. I mean, it's, the audience have to be able to relate with the music, whether they draw to it from the text or through the musical, um, I mean, or through, or through the musical elements in the music, all of these balls come, comes together to give us, you know, I, I think and can provide a window on, on what kind of African music could fulfill um, a socially aware ethics. So um, I also think African art music compositions or the performance of, you know, Nigerian artworks can, or even while it retains its artistic quality, can be redirected to meet our social, um, contemporary social challenges and foster positive change and transform individual minds, whether in the immediate society and even the world at large. And I think one way to ameliorate and address social vices is to think about art music transformative um, potential through recontextualizing it and redefining the role of art music in dealing with topical and important issues that may benefit, you know, Nigerians and even the world at large. So, um, I, uh, well, whether we talk about the tonal and formal language that, you know, in, 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 of course, Nigerians generally, even when we talk about art music, <clears throat> we still very much operate within the tonal, you know. Um, uh, well, of course, there are post, -ton um, post tonal uh, modernist um, composers who do think that very much uh, more that we should have um, more of the musical, um, um, you know. Of course, um, my point here is that. Um, not to go to technical, is that whether we bring to bear through the kind of musical language we use, we think of musical science or musical semiotics that can invite or um, discussions that even extends beyond, you know, the concert hall. And I do think that even when many of these kinds of works are not even just, you know, put to bear in concert spaces of which, you know, with the COVID restriction, many concert um, performance are, are on hold. But of course, I mean, the internet is there. We can, you know, um, get this music out through that. And in fact, I was at a point thinking about, um, you know, when this um, recent, um, is it NTAS? Um, protests came up, and I see the role to which, of course, popular musicians are held in with high esteem in in Nigeria. I mean, it's not because they've got much of what um, you know um, our composers of art music have, but because of course they do things that are very very much relatable. And I do think that art music can even well whether the people draw draw. Uh, to it through the text, they can as well learn the musical language. They can as well, you know, see the artistic quality of such music from since I mean from from um, if we can reach them through what they can connect to it. I mean, of course, it's not something that you know happens just like that. So. Um, my um, take in this, I, um, in this, um, what I, I have to say in this topic is that I think of an African um, art music that is accessible, you know, and that grapples textually with contemporary social uh, political issues, and also that allows very well, maybe loose 
principles of musical construction or openness that invites engagement that really are even not controlled by the composition itself. So um, some, of course, there are some composers who have tried to work in this line. And I do think that many more um, African and Nigerian composers can, you know, pull this line and even performers can, performers or um, concert um, programmers can, you know, have more of this work being featured in, in, you know, in, the, in their program such that it reaches out to so many Nigerian audiences. Um, I do hope that um, with um, this, um, you know, little um, short time um, presentation, I've been able to make a point. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow, uh, that's all I can say, wow. Um, now you've just um, sort of um, activated the urge for me to also do my own research, <laughs> which I wasn't thinking of before, but now I think I have to start uh, thinking about that. Thank you so much, Dr. Grace Talabi. Uh, it's been um, a very wonderful uh, presentation. And um, I've noted one or two things. But uh, it's not about me now, because um, uh, there are other people who would like to ask some questions. So uh, in, but before then, um, you were going to go on a musical interval. And there is something very special about this music interval, because NAM project is all about the Nigerian music, Nigerian art music. Um, I'm sure many of us are very conversant with um, the name Ayobankoli. Likewise, the performer is one of well, the world sensation I'm talking about, no other person than Mrs. Agata Ibiazo Holland. I hope. Uh, I pronounced that correctly because this is somebody who has done it at the highest stage out there. Uh, she will be performing Ayobankoli's year. And um, what, once the interval is done, I uh, would want us all to uh, put, or while the interval, I mean, the music is ongoing, I would like us to put in our questions uh, for today's guest. Uh, that's Dr. Grace Talabi put it in the uh, chat, uh, chat room uh, so that we take those questions immediately after now. Please sit back and enjoy the rendition.
so that I don't pronounce it uh, wrongly the second time, Dr. Ibiazo Olan. Uh, most of the apologies for uh, the wrong pronunciation at the other time. But I mean, you all have listened to her. Uh, I have no doubts. I don't think uh, anybody else here would say uh, she's not one of the best um, exports of our nation. So that being said, I would like to open the floor for questions. And I hope our there, Dr. Grace Talabi is um, ready to take the lines and um, answer the questions as we, uh, that will be thrown at her. Thank you. So any question you can just uh, either uh, put it up in the chat room or raise your hand, signify, and um, um, just speak directly. Hello. Hello. Yes. Um, hello. We speak in place. Yeah. Good evening. Very good evening. Good evening. My name is uh, Samuel Ajose. Oh, from the. Hello, Mister. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, hello, Mr. Samuel. Yeah, good evening. Uh, good evening. Do I have the floor? Yes, you do. Please okay. go ahead. Thank you. Uh, let me first appreciate our guest speaker uh, this evening for a very thought provoking uh, uh, conversation. Uh, sincerely, uh, the way she's been able to connect. Uh, Art music and socioeconomic uh, matters uh, is very, very, you know, um, inspiring. My concern from our uh, intervention is that taking, you know, social cultural, I mean, social economic issues uh, into the performative space, especially within the uh, domain of art music. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder, or I want to ask, one, these socioeconomic uh, problems, corruption, uh, insecurity, and so on and so forth. Uh, yes, the people, the political class, the political class, uh, arguably some of our top uh, patronizers of art music if you allow me to put it that way. But I'm wondering if popular musicians, if with the amount of you know, conversation they have on these issues, if it has not made any change or changes within the political class, I'm wondering if taking it into the art music space will do. And this is the reason why I'm uh, wondering. We know that the masses, the masses, they are in the center stage of this problem. So are we, are we looking at the lead or the follower in terms of speaking to these issues? If we are looking at the, the lead, they are not in our art music space. And I'm happy that our, our guest speaker did uh, identify the fact that uh, this art music that we talk about likely has been, has been within the purview of, I mean, within the spaces of uh, religious uh, church and concert hall. So I'm wondering who are we actually taking this conversation to? The, the political class or the masses? So I, I, I want our guest speaker to talk to this so that uh, when we want to make this intervention in form of art music, 
who will, at the final analysis, who will benefit from this conversation? Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, I'm sure Dr. Grace is ready to answer that question. Okay, so I'm going to make an attempt. Thank you for the um, insightful question. And um, this is the way I think of it. Um, whether we um, castigate the political class, I think everyone, everyone has a role in the social space. So um, first of all, my proposition is that art music can be a nascent space. I've not tested it, but of course I also have anecdotal evidence. I mean, because some of some Nigerian composers have tried to, you know, explore this realm. Very few, very few. I mean, like I can, I can handful. So um, mm. and. Of course, um, this pushes art music to, um, of course, we look at popular music and its entertainment value. Art music then becomes something of an in-between position, meant for contemplation. I do think that music psychologists um, can as well look into this you know, area because I'm in a concert space, I've come to listen to music to enjoy myself, right? Music for contemplation. And there is something that makes you sit back to think about, you know, some of these things. That's why I say that this engagement then goes even beyond the music composition. I can cite example. During the course of my research, I, I, I did see that, of course, there was this particular composer I worked on. He wrote on um, um, the corrupt practices of, you know, a particular sector in our economy, and <clears throat> you will be surprised that um, because, I mean, one, you don't know who might be seated in the hall, and I do think that we cannot just castigate the political class. Everyone as a role to play, to fulfill in the social space. So whether the music is talking to you, I mean, the composer has just written his own, but what I do think is not even who it touches and who, 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 who um, it transforms. Well, it's part of it, but I do think, um, my fear then is um, of activity, activism rather than what you say, I don't know if, um, I've been able to throw a little light to what you will question your act. Yeah, th oh, Dr. Oh. Zalabi, thank you. Th th thank you. I think uh, I think I, I I now understand your your position better. So it's more of um, awareness. It's more of activism, and then um, sorry, sorry, uh, chair, sorry, chairman. I didn't uh, take permission before I started talking. Sorry. Mr. Ladiga. Hey, it's okay. I mean, so, I hope you're Mr. Done. Ladiga, sorry. So I, okay. so I said, I said I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with our response. I'm fine with our response. Also. Uh, that is more of, it's more of uh, awareness making and activism. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you, Dr. Talabi. God bless you. Thank you. I Sorry, I didn't say activism, but that is what I sense. I do think that so by the time we have more of these compositions and they are performed in concert spaces, it's going to engender a lot of other issues which we might then want to deal with. But of course, it's going to fulfill um, also some of the roles which I speak of, of socioeconomic, you know, issues. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. And um, uh, I see a very big end um being raised and um um i don't need to introduce him uh he's very known to every one of us and i will just uh, yield the floor to his eminence dr ayoloroti thank you there's nothing big about that hand it's just an ordinary hand um well done uh, thank you uh, dr talabi i just want to build on uh, what um uh, Doctor, I just uh, uh, brought on board, you know, and um, two things. 
number one this let's think i mean what we're on about here is arts music let's think of it as a product i mean the nigerian version of it nigerian art music and then we are looking at uh, the use of this product to achieve a specific result in our society so my first question is this what exactly is this product this nigerian art music product what exactly is it where does it uh, who is it targeted at what was the language what does it entail is it vocal music is it instrumental music what makes it nigerian art music you know uh for starters if you understand if you to understand where i'm going to I and mean, where i'm coming from rather uh this program um we have only i think we have 11 participants right now and i know that uh, the awareness for this program was really uh, was really thrown out there i think about a week ago the organizers on a specific platform said oh only 28 people have signed up and here we are we have 11 people what does that tell us about that product we call nigerian art music 11 people despite the you know the, the big adverts the big um, awareness that went for it so what does that tell you about that product itself is it a viable product does it even exist maybe we're just following in the shadows of those who brought the idea of art music to us through colonialism and education what is that is it part of our lives is it something we recognize because before we can talk about the efficiency of the product we need to know whether it is it is even existent with us you know so that's my first question the the product itself what is it what is it is it relevant to us my second question goes directly from uh, what the doctor just said. Um, the terms of efficiency. Music, let's take popular music, like the great Akin Yubu said, that African popular musicians are way more successful than African art musicians. They've been out there, they've been plunging things out there. How much impact using the music idiom have they achieved in the way uh, uh, the society behaves, the way the society thinks. Let's narrow it down. I like to use the example of Fela and Nicola Kokuti. If you listen to the songs of Fela in the, in the 70s, all the issues he talked about from corruption, from the woes of democracy that cannot work for us, everything he talked about, if you play the music today, you think probably Fela is still alive and ad addressing the exact issues that are happening today, which means this society is been is a kind of cyclic thing that is uh, that is happening in the society. If what Fela sang about in the seventies and the eighties, they're still happening now, and we have this music. So how effective was Fela's music? And now let's 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 i mean now going back to the question of what the product is before fella died by the time he was writing such music as pansa pansa he said his music was no longer afrobeat he, de he, de he, he defined his music as african classical music and to be very honest with you i do agree with him i mean by the time i mean if you listen to his latter works which are not very popular you know, a lot of people don't know them. Uh, the type of things he explored with still are addressing the ills of the of the society. My issue is this: looking at it, yes, he brought his popular music idiom into the classical idiom, in the art idiom. This product music that we're talking about, of what impact has it had on on people? Uh, Doctor and Professor Femi uh, Adedeji. OAU, they talked about transformative musicology, about the same thing we are talking about here. You know, how effective is it? How effective is this music we are talking about? Are we connecting with the people? Can it connect with the people? Talk less of it. 
changing the society. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Lurati. Um, again, I will have to apologize for the, uh, for also not, um, I mean, for not uh, using the right title for Dr. Shulaya. My sincere apologies, Dr. Shulaya. <laughs> So, Dr. Grace, you have the floor now. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Lawrence. Your question seems so long, such that, yeah, I'm going to try to... Um, okay, so the first story is about um, African art music, or is about African art music being a product, and what relevance is it in the society? Is that the question, please, sorry? Hello. The inquiry is more, yeah, the inquiry is more of what exactly is it? Because I mean, I, I, can, I, I can say that a lot of what we call this African music, the music that we are written get towards another audience entirely. Maybe a scholarly audience, maybe the Western audience, not even the African I mean, audience. So what exactly is it? Because we know, <laughs> we need to know what it is before we can start talking about how to use it to control the society. So the question is, what exactly is that product? What exactly is it? What exactly <laughs> is Nigerian art music for starters? Before we start talking about what we can okay. use it to achieve. Okay, so, um, well, this is not new. African art music or Nigerian art music is an hybrid kind of, you know, or synthesized um, art music genre that of course has Western and African music elements. And then it's more um, denotes contemporary music gen that has its roots in African traditional and cultural value system. So if I will answer um, your question of relevance, I think it also comes from the point of view to say that, I mean, like if we, for example, African art music has its um, language, musical language, and this, of course, is alien to many African, um, 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 uh, you know, mainstream audience of, you know, African, um, um, uh, a mainstream audience in Africa or even in Nigeria. So this is the point of view I come from. I see that, I mean, of course, you, we can, through the kinds of work we compose, the kinds of work we write in using this musical language, then draw peop, more people to appreciate this kind of work. They may be, you know, drawn by the interest of the language. When I say language, textual language, if we are dealing with, you know, ec social economic issues, every Nigerian can relate with it. Every Nigerian, I mean, religious or non-religious can relate with it. Whether they come to, you know, they're, they're drawn through, of course, the text of that music. They then also, in one way or the other, learn the musical language. So, for example, now the question is, are we then talking about vocal music or instrumental music? I do think that, of course, um, it can be, I mean, there, there can be something of an in-between because um, how then do, the question I will be grappling with then, how then do um, Nigerians relate to instrumental music that's got no text? So I think that's the question. Um, I think um, this this kind of view might, might, might be, you know, faulted with. Dr. Lurati, do yeah. I? Um, uh, yes, um, well, uh, if, if I may push it uh, a bit further, would you think this is the problem we have in the, in, uh, the inability of the product to reach the people and change them? The fact that it is a hybrid, I mean, you describe it to be a hybrid uh, product, you know, and, uh, but don't you also think popular music is hybrid? Oh, sorry to cut you. I mean, like, 
what is the hybridity in it? I mean, like I think of Ninja hip hop, for example. I mean, all of this kind of music was never ours. I mean, what then makes it, you know, acceptable? No. Whether I breed it here or what, I mean, it's, we're in a global wow. space. Well, um, I would like to come in now and um, not to uh, give an answer to the um, issues at hand, but, um, but this is becoming very interesting. And I know if we continue to uh, talk about this, we may not end today's session. Already, uh, we've gone beyond uh, the scheduled time. And um, again, I will also like to apologize for starting late. It's due to issues beyond my control. And um, I'm sure this would not happen the next time. Um, Dr. Grace Talabi, um, would you want to quickly answer or talk about what um, Dr. Ayoloroti um, mention and um, give us your closing shot. Um, yeah, I think I, I did answer that, um, but I really wanted to hear more from him. Maybe we can have the conversation um, after this presentation since it is timed. But maybe on, on um, the second question, talking about the cyclic re representation of music with issues. Dr. Lawrence, in my view also is about um, when I think of music and social meaning. Of course, you mentioned um, Fela and uh, Fela Kuti, and how he has been able to bring some of these issues to bear. Um, okay, so this is what I still think of. I think of, um, um you know art music power to influence um the or or, or, or or i mean to influence the or change our thinking in ways that because it it allows for contemplation when i'm listening to the last music for example i could be listening to it in the party i mean art music is contemplative it is you know you think of meditation and I still think that it is something worth studying. I don't have an answer to it, but I do think that music changed the world, it changes society. And we have history, I mean, we have historical evidence to this even back from the antiquity to the present. So maybe we need to invite some of those things again. And um, of course, this engenders further research. So, but I do think that art music can, can maybe, um, be a potent, you know, um, 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 uh, way to even, you know, uh, engage these things further because then it then goes beyond the music. The music has only been a product to bring it out. It goes, it then goes beyond the music for us to see. And then we can even through this reach out to the populace more. You can have more people attracted to this kind of music because they, I mean, Nigerians or Africans are drawn to the power of music, musical text. And I think this is very possible through this. Thank you. Oh. So I'm thinking about a recon. Okay. Um... Um, I've just been told that um, Dr. Agatha would also like to make a contribution. Please, uh, you can go ahead. Um, thank you very much. Um, I, I guess um, I would like to um, do, um, talk about the like the version of the parameters. So we Hello. Hello. We can hear you. We can hear you. Please speak on. Yeah, oh. Dr. Luroti, does that uh, make any? Oh no. I think Dr. Um, Dr. Tabi was still talking, so I was letting her talk. Um, okay, I mean, if you can hear me, I I'll just um, go on. I think yes, um, my um, my I, I wanted to like add to the conversation of like um the relevance of classical uh, of um, nigerian art music and why you know 
um, the hybridity of um, Nigerian um, Nigerian art music versus um, Nigerian pop music. Um, the uh, why the um, it, it's not it's not quite comparable in terms of like it being able to reach the all um, um, the general audience. I think the uh, one of the reason is because the um, hybridity of Nigerian art music is a combination of um, Western classical music and um, Nigerian traditional um, music. So Western class, um, classical music already has in itself, already has like limited audience to begin with. And so um, in order to um, be able to enjoy Western classical music of any, uh, in any medium, whether opera, um, vocal music or instrumental music, one has to be somewhat educated, even in the West. And so that, um, that in itself has um, limited people's ability to be able to connect to the music and enjoy it. And so when we then add Western classical music with Nigerian art music, we, um, there's a limit, limit to the audience just because um, the, of the language of, the, of one, one part of the world. And so like the, um, the Western part of the hybrid of um, um, classic um, Nigerian art music has um, in a way um, kind of restricted the amount of, of the number of audience that we can potentially have as practitioners of um, Nigerian art music. And so um, this, that, that in itself poses a problem um, when comparing to when comparing it to Nigerian popular music, because popular music um, was created to be able to um, get to like the masses. It's like music for the masses, music for everybody. You don't necessarily have to read about um, um, J. or Beyonce in order to. Um, to attend the concert, but um, when um, it's, it would be better if you read about Scotty before you attended one of his concerts. So uh, I think that um, the the hybridity of the two um, forms of music uh, and the kind of hybridity it is kind of um, has limited uh, caused limitations for whoever we are potentially able to reach with um with the music with nigerian art music that is thank you thank you so very much dr agatha um i mean i i, I would like us to continue talking about this because it's coming to an area where i'm even very much interested um it's I, I I will say I love to brand the Nigerian art music. I love to brand what comes out of um, the classical side of music in Nigeria. Uh, but um, I don't have the floor tonight. Our guest speaker has done justice to the topic today. And I want to thank every other contributors uh, who have uh, contributed to the discourse. Uh, not in any particular order, but um, I must appreciate you all, Dr. Shuleye, uh, Dr. Agatha, and uh, our very own Dr. Ayoluroti. Thank you so very much. I mean, just from this session alone, I've been able to pick a topic for our next session. And I think it's something we all don't want to miss. Uh, the team will go back to the drawing boards and um, sorry, so uh, there's a question coming in. Um, just a moment, please. And I think that's coming from uh, Mr. Babatun De Shosoya. How do we involve African art music in the globalized or in the globalization market itself? Mm. Well, um, Dr. Grace Talabi, 
would you like to say something about that? On that because okay, we have so, but let me just add this. Let me just quickly add this. Um, I really don't understand the question, but if it is what I'm thinking, I, I do think that, like I mentioned in my presentation, for example, we've not had a, um, a lot of concert gatherings lately because of, you know, the pandemic. But at least music has been shown out to people and we have the digital space, we have the social media. Um, of course, there are performances and we could throw this out through the, re the recordings out for people to listen to. Maybe, yeah, from there we can, you know, find people who would find interest and then draw um, more um, attention towards this, kinds of, this kind of music. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Grace Talabi. Thank you, everyone. Um, I also would like to thank the convener, uh, Mr. Yuachai, uh, soon to be doctor as well. Uh, I call him professor already, so, but um, I'm sure he's getting there. Um, it's been a wonderful time. We've learned um, that there's a lot to be done. There's a whole lot to be done. But uh, this is just the beginning. I would like to encourage us all uh, not to sit back, but um, to further charge ourselves to do more in promoting um, the Nigerian art music. It's not a one man thing. We all have to be involved. And um, we need to see it as our own thing. Uh, gone are the days where I mean, the state was actively involved in training, uh, sponsoring concerts. These days, like Dr. Ayoloroti said, we need to look at the product itself. Is it sellable? And how can we refine it for even uh, our national acceptance? I mean, for national acceptance, before we can talk of global acceptance, because, you know, uh, there's a saying that uh, in Yoruba language, it's I don't know how to translate that uh, to English. Uh, I mean, in English, I think we must start from our own front. We must accept, we must uh, believe, and then we can promote. This being said, I would like to um, invite the convener, uh, Mr. Yajai, to close today's session. Thank you. I remain your Kunle Madiga. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, I wasn't expecting the host of the show to call the producer to come and say something. <laughs> I think it's strange. But um, all the same, thank you very much, everyone. It's been a nice um, discourse. It's been a nice um, um, deliberation. And then we'll continue to have this discussion. We plan to do this once in a month. Um, I think we've decided on first Saturday of every month so that we bring all these issues that have um, these issues that have made Nigerian arts music stagnant over the years. We plan to start bringing them to bear, and we need to start engaging this conversation so that we can find solutions and then real life solution so that we can improve the hearts. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining in. Like I said. Um, and then we hope that when we call you again, you'll find time to join us. Thank you for all your contributions, Dr. Bayo um Agatha, Dr. Agatha, Dr. Grace Talabi, thank you so much. Dr. Um, Dr. Samuela Jose, thank you so much. And the host, Kunle Ladiga, thank you very much, everybody. And all the silent listeners also, Shimon Aji and the rest of them, thank you very much, everyone. Um, hopefully, we'll meet you next month. Thank you. God bless. Oh, 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 oh,
Oh, sorry.